Hey everybody, this is R.C. Peck, the founder of Fearless Wealth and the creator of the Fearless Wealth portfolio. And this is my market situation report for Saturday, March 16th. I hope you all are doing well. And the situation I see this week is actually in two kind of bull markets, but they're in very opposite bull markets. Uh, and I want to talk about what they are. And I'm titling this week's uh, conversation, The Wrong Side of History. And I'll talk about what that means. So first, let me look at the, the stock market. And I want to show two images or two charts for the stock market. The first one is the VIX. And the VIX represents the volatility or how much insurance costs to um, well insure yourself in the stock market. And when the black line is high, insurance is very expensive. And when the black line is low near that black horizontal line at the very bottom of the chart, insurance is really cheap. So you can see in that 2006, 2007, insurance was pretty cheap. The volatility in the stock market was really low. Now, what we didn't know at the time was we were nearing the peak. Um, the stock market actually peaked in October of 2007, so a little to the right of that pink dot. Um, but what I wanted to point out is today the volatility in the stock market is falling even more. And what concerns me is I think a lot of the manipulation – sorry um, – I should probably not say manipulation because that's a real trigger word to some people. A lot of the intervention that the Fed has done has really kind of manufactured or distorted normal the normal discovery mechanism of the stock market. So the volatility is incredibly low and looks like it's going lower to historic lows. Now the reason I call this the wrong side of history is historically speaking when volatility falls this low and is this low there's really only one direction that it's going to go soon after. Now, it can stay down there like it did in 2006 for three, four, five, six months, but then it moves up. And the reason I bring this up is, yes, the Dow Jones is at new left lifetime highs. Small caps are at new lifetime highs. Mid caps are at new lifetime highs. And the S&P 500 is um, spitting distance, not even shorter than spitting dif distance from lifetime highs. And it's happening why volatility is some of the lowest ever being counted. And so the wrong side of history says this is not a time that you go to sleep and forget about what's going on. Yes, the stock market has been in a bull market since March of 2009. Yes, that's cost the government about $8 trillion or more depending on how you measure it. So it hasn't come without a price. The other thing I just want to show about the, the stock market in the U.S. that's been going on, this bull market that's been going on for four years is – if you look at this screenshot, we are in the kind of the, the upper range, and this is a trading range. So when the blue line, which is the S&P 500, is up in that, that red area, that is simply saying it's near the upper range of its trading range. It can stay up there for a while like it did from July to October of last year, um, but it's already been going up for a while. So if you see in last year, it moved up from May kept going all the way up probably through October, had a correction here, and it's been doing that same bull run. So we've been in this red area for quite some time. Uh, we're getting kind of long in the tooth. The reason I'm saying the wrong side of history is this is not a time to kind of fall asleep or back the truck up in the stock market, which actually some people are saying. Now look, I teach four strategies. One of them is called market probability. We are in green light mode for market probability. So that says to be fully in the stock market. So I'm not saying don't be in. I'm simply saying be aware and be expecting a correction in the stock market. Even I'm not saying it's Armageddon 35, 40% down, but we should expect a 10% correction anytime around here. The second thing I want to talk about with being on the wrong side or making sure you're not on the wrong side of history is this chart right here, which I thought was great. So what you see in this chart here is a map of basically Northern Africa and Asia and Europe. And over in the lower right, you see 1000, which is uh, the year 1000. Right above it is AD 100. And what the dots show you is if you measured all the GDP on planet Earth and you geolocated it, where would the center of the GDP be? So in AD 1, the center GDP would have been right here. 1000 AD, it would have been a little bit south of it. This is, to me, this is pretty neat. Now, just so you know, that's Afghanistan right there. 1500 AD, it started moving north. 1820, 
started moving north again. 1913, it was way over northern Europe. 1940, the tip of Europe moved across, started moving across the Atlantic as uh, the U.S. got a bigger and bigger GDP. Then you can see it started moving north and moving back. And now 2010, it is already moving back to Asia. And you can see in 2025, the GDP center of the world will be somewhere over su southern Russia. Now, that doesn't mean Russia is going to have the biggest GDP. It's just kind of a geolocation of all the GDP in the world and where the biggest GDP is coming from. The point of me showing this to you, which I actually think is a really cool chart, is that the 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 geographic the gdp geographic center of the planet is moving back to asia it's actually already moved back to asia because in 2010 that point on the chart is actually asia uh, most of russia is actually in Re asia and not europe and being on the right side of asia is uh, being on the right side of history is knowing what is going on in history so currently right now, the stock market is in a cyclical bull market, which basically means shorter term and has been for four years. And the precious metal market is in a secular um, bull market. Secular means long term, uh, secular is seculum, uh, long term for Latin. And the reason why you want to be on the right side of history is look at this price chart right here. This is the amount of ounces that China is importing for gold. So amount of gold ounces that China is importing. Now they're importing it through Hong Kong. So as you can see, they're importing more and more through Hong Kong. Now what you may already know is, uh, is China is the largest gold miner in the world. So not only is China mining more gold than any other country in the world, it's also imports have gone absolutely straight up. So for people to say that gold is over or gold is dead while you have the GDP geolocation center of the world moving back to Asia have already moved back to Asia having the largest GDP in Asia China which is also the second largest economy in the world increasing their buying of gold this is not over we're in a breather right now we are still in a long-term bull market in gold and we also right now happen to be in a shorter term bull market in the stock market it's kind of cool that they're both going on right now that's one of the things that i love about the four strategies that make up the fearless wealth portfolio is that you can be in two different bull markets that you think have to go counter to each other but in fact they don't thanks so much for being here um, next month is our semi-annual strategy gathering so twice a year we get together in person it's going to be on April 9th. It's going to be um, online also. So if you can't make it in person, um, I will also stream it live over the internet. But that is our semi-annual strategy gathering. And of course, I'm going to go over the markets, speed investing, live extensive Q&A, updates on the strategies, and market x-ray. I'm so glad you guys were here. Have a great weekend, and I'll speak with you soon. Take care.